So today, I want to talk a little bit, part testament, part call to action. So it's going to be a little bit different than what we've been listening for the last hour and a half. And it's really what I believe a, a framework that's going to bring all of our work together. So as Stacy said, my name is Vinelia Rivera. And I'm here representing a couple different hats that I've worn over the course of the last 15 years. At one point, I was a political organizer. Then I became a political director. Then I became a senior manager. And after being come, becoming a senior manager, I decided to go to planning school. So now I'm an urban planner and a, and a project management consultant, right? And what I've come to understand through that journey is the following. With coordinated and collective action, change comes. With aspirational leadership and patience, change can occur at scale, even if it is incrementally. Through effective policy, strategy, engagement, my work seeks to unlock the gifts of the hearts, the hands, and the minds to advance individual empowerment and enable transformative change. My work thrives, and all of our work thrives, at the intersection of cross-sector co collaboration, sustainability, and social justice. And that's the topic I really want us to focus today, social justice. By focusing on the nexus between people, planning, and politics, I've come to understand that the most important economic and social issues from race to class to the environment and education to transportation and healthcare are all interconnected. Put simply, if we want to see a better future, we need to think and see beyond those silos. So while the central focus of today has been transportation planning, innovation and reform, I want to take a step back for just for a moment on a local story that I had the blessing to be a part of several years ago of criminal justice reform. I believe it's a story that shows that we can make change from the street level to Beacon Hill when we center on social justice and sustainability. So what I want to emphasize from this video is State Senator Sonia Chang Zia's words. When we show up, when we vote, when we organize, and we never give up, that's when the, all the things that we've been talking about today happen. So it's not just in one design meeting or in one meeting with an elected official. It's the, the entire ecosystem of that. This is social justice, this is sustainability, and what this video doesn't show is the why or the how. When I inherited that campaign, it was 25 years in the running. I inherited a campaign where grassroots organizations from several gateway cities from across this commonwealth and very few progressive legal aid and law, law enforcement organizations would be a part of. And in five years, this happened. And we can say that it was because of the strategists. We can say it was because of the coalition organizers. We can say it was because of the governor. We could even say it was because of the elected officials. But I know for a fact that it was every time that those of us wanted to walk away and pick up our bags, they didn't let us. 
And who's that community in our constituency on the issues that we're talking about? So some of you might be asking, aren't we here to talk about transportation though, Winelia? What's, can, we, can we bring it back? And we are. And I shared this story not to distract you from our focus today, but to hopefully inspire you and drive home a couple of different messages. To make the transportation and resiliency investments we have seen emerge from current citywide planning efforts, whether that's Go Boston 2030 or Imagine 2030, it will take sustained and relentless organizing and advocacy to activate the political will and courage to make all of it happen. As, as technocrats, decision makers, strategists, and sometimes agitators, we must become fully aware that to win, we must lead with the spirit and leadership of those most affected. To make change happen at the street level from Beacon Hill, we must be accountable to the past to lean into the future. Whether that's gold standard bus rapid transit, pedestrian and bike cycle lanes, or increased social and climate resiliency, we have a unique moment to either retreat or resist. And if history has any indicator, particularly in this commonwealth and in this community, hey, and in this building, we will act boldly and go into that future. And I'm here because I wanna make that case to everybody here, that as we complete all of these planning processes and we go into next year, that we make a commitment with all of us in this room and those outside of this room, that we become a just sustainable city. And what, by just sustainability, we can see what that definition is. We can't talk about our environment and we can't talk about the future if we're not talking about social justice. And if we're, not, and if we're talking about social justice, we're talking about those people that have been left behind time and time again. A just sustainable city for Boston is one that understands that the political will and action to move everything that we want to see forward won't happen if we're not accountable to the legacy of structural racism across the local planning and political history of this city. We can't continue to forge a new collective vision and a master plan if, we're not lever if, we, if we don't use transportation to transform our communities. And that's the message that everybody here has been echoing. And I'm going to go a little bit over. I'm sorry. We must be accountable to this. Who wins and who loses is the responsibility of all of us. Whether we're organizers, planners, de technocrats, or decision makers. And we do this by leveraging downtown development and economic growth to increase connectivity and access for communities of color. That's what that means here. Public transit must become a just, public transit is our tool to becoming a just sustainable city. This, I really argue, would strengthen Boston's social resiliency at a time of historic levels of income inequality. We cannot be afraid to navigate this, nor be short-sighted to think that we can ignore it. And lastly, as I see the music popping up, the other part that's really important is, well, how does this look like? The geography of our investments as we move forward in our political advocacy next year has a place and has a name. It's places like Villa Victoria. It's places like Chinatown, East Boston, Mattapan, Roxbury. And not to say that we're not all one Boston because we truly are, but if we're not leaning into the path, if we're not taking those that have been most affected by all of these changes, we're going to completely alter the fabric of the city that we've been and who we're going to become. So truly take into consideration this framework of just sustainability and how transportation gives us the lever to make that happen, not just for some, but for all of us. And thank you.